And we're in a heated contest between two division rivals, one of whom is happily nested at the top of the standings, and the other one is looking to shake the tree a bit. Matt, listen, if you want to be the best, you've got to beat the best, right? These are the games where a team who's trying to come out on top of the pack can get a leg up. And of course, if you're on top, this is a prime opportunity to keep them away. Now to the plate, like Michael you. Conforto. No hits in three tries so far. He struck out once. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Well below the knees, laid off on the changeup there. This is where you got to take stock in the situation. Adjust your batting gloves and realize you need a gapper to score this guy from first. If nothing less, pass the baton to the guy behind you and keep the line moving. Now some action in the Phillies bullpen as a right-hander begins to crank it up out there. Fastball close, but he didn't get it two and one. Swing and a miss, strike two. Hit hard on the ground towards second. Reined in. Throw on to first, gets him, and the side is retired. Mets played a run on a couple of hits. Home half of the eighth, straight ahead. Phillies lead this one three to two. Here's the center fielder, Odubel Herrera. He'll lead Leading things off, off here in this one-run contest. Center fielder, Odubel. First pitch on Herrera. its way. Started to go around, but it's ruled strike one anyway. Turned on that one and crushed it. Just pulled it a little foul. Now here's the pitch. And a changeup swung on and missed for the first down. People always talk about how important getting the leadoff men on base is, and, and it's true. So in the eighth inning of a one-run game, that's a really nice job of attacking a hitter and sending him packing. Here's the first pitch to him. And he'll start him with a slider that's taken down and away for ball one. A great take on that slider away right there. But I'm thinking in that situation, that pitcher's got to execute a little bit better. That was almost a non-competitive pitch. Being outside, you could almost have let that one go right out of his hand. Drilled to the left side. And a base hit as that's in the left, and they've got themselves a base runner. The back. The pitcher. So a runner at first now with one away. And in steps the catcher, JT Real Muto. First pitch of the at bat on its way. A swing and a shot hit down the corner. And he just couldn't keep that ball fair as it winds up a long foul ball. Real Muto behind with an 0 and 2 count now. To first. He's right there. Simmons. On to first as they get the double play to get him out of the inning. One hit in the inning, but that gets erased. Ninth inning coming up. It's the Phillies three and the Mets two. Now we're going to have a conference at the home plate area, so it would appear that we'll see a double switch here. Your Tommy Hunter please. comes on from the pen, hoping to finish this one off here in the top now of the ninth. And batting in the seventh. There's Robbie Cano now. The previous history with Tommy Hunter. He's got five base hits in 19 tries. He also has one home run. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Here we go with inning number nine as the first pitch misses for ball one. That's a good pitch to lay off right there, that cutter inside. And that is a real tough pitch for hitters to lay off of. And a lot of times, if you do swing at that cutter in, you're going to end up with some firewood in a broken bat. A ball and two strikes. Lifted into center field. Patrolling center makes the play one out. Now back. The first base. Trying to pick things up where he left off. Dominic Smith. It was a solo shot for him in his last at bat. 
First pitch of the at bat. And this one's nowhere close as that bounces to the plate for ball one. And this is just off the outside corner ball two. It's never advantageous to fall behind 2 and 0 as a pitcher but if you're going to do it it's far better to do it with a guy down in the bottom of the order. Time for a challenge fastball right here though. 2 0 pitch a fastball inside and he's struggling here it's 3 and 0. Time to focus here. This game is way too close to be walking guys so we'll see if he can make him swing the bat on this next pitch. And he lays off ball four. So now the potential tying run here is aboard late in the game. Three of those pitches were definitely out of the zone, but that now last that pitch looked pretty darn good to me. You're not usually going to get many favorable calls on three and oh, though. You have to earn that spot. Into the box, Keon Broxton. He'll be looking for something he could drive into the gap and drive home that tying run from first. He's set. Here it comes. In there for strike one, 0 oh and 1. Great spot with that pitch down and away. He'll be fine coming out of the bullpen in this one if he can keep hitting that spot. That's over, but low, it's a ball and a strike. Hit out towards second. Played on the backhand. Back to first, a double play. And with that, the ball game is over. So, guys, do you think games against division rivals might mean more to the players than others? I do, Matt. I mean, these guys are competitors, and they want to win every game. But they know that when October comes around, it's a division championship that really sets you up for success in the postseason. These rivalry games are a bit more impactful to that race. So, yes, I think their outcome can affect a player's morale a little bit more noticeably. Metropolitans for the win tonight would lock up a spot in the postseason by guaranteeing themselves at least a wild card berth. And for more on that, here's Heidi Watney. Matt, these players are motivated and excited. I'm told that, though they do still have business to attend to in the division race, they're not going to hold back the celebration if they get the win tonight and clinch a place for themselves in the postseason. They say it's what they've been working towards all season, and to achieve it here in their first chance to do so would be amazing. All right, Heidi, thank you. Here's Jed Lowry now. He's newly entered into the ballgame, so this will be his first trip to the plate here in inning number seven. Lowry. First pitch coming. Here it is. In the air now, out to left. Soto giving chase. He's there and records the first down. Now back. Now back to the top of the Mets order, Andrelton. digging in Andrelton Simmons. Two hits and two trips for him thus far. He's ready. Here's the first offering. This is line to left. And another base hit for him. Now three for three in this one. Dan, with that single, he's now three quarters of the way to hitting for the cycle. Toughest one still on the shelf, though. He's got to get a triple. Yeah, that you said it, Dero. That's one of those that's either got to hit right down the line or one of those tweeners in the gap. He has enough speed, so if he can find a gap or find one down the line, maybe he can do it, and he's going to at least get one more at bat in this one. This is pulled into right. In there, a base hit. And that runner will go no further than second as there are two aboard now. 
the catch. Hey, Dero, not a bad night. Real three thing. singles, but hey, you'll take three for four every day of the week. Yeah, in today's day and age, Dan, where everything's a homer, a walk, or a strikeout, it's refreshing to see this guy throw out three base hits. So it's a tight spot here. First and second, one man out, and next is the catcher, Wilson Ramos. He's set and the pitch. Now a swing and a ball popped in the air back behind short. Turner backs up and takes care of it. Two away. Now that the left fielder. So here's the cleanup hitter, Keon Broxton. He was retired via the ground ball last time up. Yeah, I understand that, Matty, but this guy's got burner wheels down the first baseline. I don't think he even concerns himself with that. He has to put it on the ground. That's part of what makes him successful. Simmons on second McNeil at first two out in the inning a swinging strike and now it's 0 and 2 hey guys that's just a nasty pitch right there I can't tell you how many nightmares I've had about nasty sliders and that's exactly what that was right there and a half hearted swing there as they tie him up inside for the third strike and the Ladies inning is over two left for the Mets so they lead it five to four Your Seth Lugo lead. gets the call from the now pen 15, to take over on the mound and start the home seventh. Seven. Seth Lugo. Striding in now for the Nats, Victor Lugo. Robles. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. Victor. Here comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. First pitch hack in here, and that's the first strike. Can't imagine he comes back with a third breaking ball. That hitter looked like he timed that one up pretty well and just missed it, fouling it away. And a good two strike pitch, but he misses high one and two. High fastball right there with a two strike count. You know what that might be doing? Setting up the next pitch could be that hard slider down and away. Something breaking down and away off the plate. Fastball swung on and missed for the first down. Nice job there taking care of the leadoff hitter via the strikeout. I'll tell you, in a one run game, especially this late, getting that first guy in the inning is so important. It changes the whole complexion of the inning, so that was a big out. And he lays off a pitch here that he probably shouldn't have. 0 and 1. Past matchups against Seth Lugo. He's 0 for 5. Popped up. And he'll put this one away in foul territory for the second out. The batter, number seven. A speedy Trey Turned Turner off. digs in now. He was a ground out victim Turner. last time up. Now a fastball a bit too low here. It's ball one. Two out nobody on. Lifted in the air toward the line and right. And that will conclude matters here in the seventh. Nationals gone in order and the deficit holds at five to four. Rhoda Glover has been summoned from the bullpen as he'll do so to start the eighth. Number 30. At the plate, Michael Conforto over two for him to this point. Here comes the first pitch. Swing and a liner. Leaps high as he makes the catch. Well done. Now the bat, that had soft the base field. hit written all over it. But a nice snag there by the infielder on that soft liner that could have been a potential base hit. And here's the former first round draft choice, Brandon Nimmo. Ball one to start the at bat. The 1 0 is laid off, but in there for strike one. Action now in the Washington bullpen as a right hander begins to get loose. Five runs, eight hits, and no errors on the Mets line score so far. The one two and he fouls this one off. Woo! 
Here's the one and two. Slap hard the opposite way. And he'll break through with a solid knock here, his first of the ball game. You think there's any justice in the game? Watch those two at bats. Both of them hit on the 24. absolute screws. One's right at one guy, and then one's a single. Go figure. Here's Robbie Cano now. Yes, he'll take a look at ball one. He could really use a knock here 0 for 3 in the game so far. Oh, it's on the ground a second. Did he get his double play? Relay to Zimmerman, the double play to end the inning. Nothing doing for the Metropolitans. They hold on to a 5-4 lead. Your Jerry Spamilia is on to pitch out of the bullpen the in the fans. bottom half of the eighth. Number 27, Jerry Spamilia. Digging in the switch hitter, Wilmer Depot. It was a backwards K, a strikeout looking for him in his Wilmer. last at bat. From the stretch, hits the bottom of the strike zone here with the sinker, strike one. On its way, the 0-2 pitch hit in the air down the right field line. And foul. The next 0-2. Ground ball right side. And he will whip this one over to first in time for the out. The third baseman, number six. Anthony. In now is Anthony Rendon. Lifetime against Familia. Just a 1 for 12 career line. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Just able to get a piece of that for strike one. And that gets the black on the outside. A good slider that time. So back to back sliders for strikes. Does he come back with yet another? There's another slider. That's back to back good sliders. And this guy's breaking ball is really good. And when he's throwing it well like he is and he's confident with it, he can throw it three or four times in a row. A really good slider in this one. The next 0 2. Another protective swing that time and another foul ball as it counts stays at 0 2. The next 0 2 misses, and that'll move it to 1 and 2 now. After multiple pitches were fouled off, it gets a little disappointing as a pitcher. So you think to say, I'm going to throw one way off the plate and see if he'll chase it. Didn't happen. Well, up here, number 22. Juan Soto oh. to the plate now. No hits in three tries so far. He struck out once. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, 0 and 1. That is such a tough pitch to lay off right there, but you have to find a way. There's nothing you're going to do with that low sinker except foul it into your shin or hit a ground ball to the left side. Good job of holding up on the low ball there, and it's one and two. And this one runs in on him as he can't get his arms extended. A great pitch there, and the inning is over. Three up, three down for Washington. Still down a run. It's five to four. Sean Doolittle enters the game from the pen and because this is a non save situation it's evident that they're just trying to get him some work after having not thrown in several days. Yeah and this is all about just getting him some work guys he hasn't a chance to come in and close a game out for several days now so they're just hoping they can keep him sharp and give him the chance to pitch in a real game situation here. And we kick off the ninth inning with a swinging strike here nothing in one. A ball and a strike to the Mets first baseman. The 1-1. One, one. Popped up. And there's a base hit and this could wind up as an important insurance strike here as the leadoff man's aboard to start the ninth. Hey, this looks like it could be a potential add-on inning here in the ninth. 
add on gives some breathing room to their pitcher going into the bottom of the inning d row yeah you love when the offense stays aggressive and you also like giving your relief pitcher a chance to breathe Ladies a little bit not having to come out there with just please. a one run lead Joanna Cespedes will get the call Number here as he'll hit for the pitcher Joanna Cespedes Cold strike as the slider gets the outside corner. And he comes in as a player to watch out for, hitting well over 300 on the season. Nope. Off the plate, one ball, one strike. His career line with Doolittle, he's 0 for 4. Hard liner towards short. So this is pulled in by the shortstop. Now battle the shortstop. So a runner at first now with one away. And standing in one of the best two strike hitters in baseball, Andrelton Simmons. First pitch of the at bat. Too low, 1 0. Smith leads off first with one away. That's inside, 2-0. Well, both of those balls have been inside, so if I'm hitting, I'm looking for something I can get my arms extended on. Probably won't come back inside for a third time. Line toward right center. But this will not get out there deep enough as it's run down by the right fielder in the alley for the second out. Now Stepping up now, Jeff six. McNeil. He's working on a three-hit ball game right now. First pitch on its way. Fastball taken, but that gets the zone for a strike. A runner on first with two away. for the punch out and the offering that misses one and two strike him out so it remains a one run lead as they head in for their final set of swing so no runs here on a base hit no errors and one man left aboard nothing further in the ninth for the Mets one last shot coming up for the Nats they'll be looking for one it's a 5 4 ball game Edwin attention, Diaz please. enters the game to now finish this one off here goal. in the bottom of the ninth. number 39 Edwin Diaz Riding in to start the name, Ryan Zimmerman as they look to get something going here and even this game up. Looks like a tall order trying to tie or take the lead against this guy who leads the league and saves. The 1 0. Popped him up. Smith in foul ground. Into the stands. He got it. The batter, the catcher, third. And now for Washington, Kirk okay. Suzuki. He was retired via the ground ball last time up. He's set. Here it comes. Fly ball out toward left center field. Broxton's on the move. He makes the play. Really had to hustle to get to that one. Two gone now. The right fielder, number three. Standing Michael. in, Michael Taylor. Hey. He's got hey, a hit in three at bats to this point. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Comes at him with the slider there, and he gets the strike. Well, that's a tough pitch to take right there, right down the middle. But I think that happens when you're facing a good pitcher like this guy. The last thing you're expecting is one right down the pipe, and unfortunately, he let that one go, and he'd like to have that pitch back to take a good swing at that one. Count moves to a ball and two strikes now. Line drive to left. But this is taken in as a perfect metaphor to end this one as that ball was hit hard, but the ball game is over.
the Mets, should they come out on top in this one, would set an all-time record for wins in a season. And, Matty, I don't think we need to emphasize what a monumental accomplishment that would be. It would be one heck of a feather in the cap for this team, who has obviously already tied one of the most hallowed records in baseball. Leading off the inning, Pablo Lopez. And they'll need him to get something going here. Number 49. Here's the first pitch to him. And this pitch is taken on the inner half for strike one. And now the Marlins bullpen will swing into action as a lefty and a right-hander start to get loose. And that's in there as well. 0-2 now. I got to say, his command of the corners in this start has been pretty exceptional. He's mixed east and west really well, and it's a big reason why he's had success. And that's off his leg on the mound. No chance to make the play. Let's just hope he's okay on the mound. And with that play now over now, time Second to check and see if our man is Darling. all right. You can that's really right. see him favoring that leg. And that is his plant leg, which is always a concern. But from the way he's acting out there, I think it looks like he's going to be okay to try and continue. Stepping into the box, Starlin Castro. One for two with a double on his line thus far. Liner towards second. But this is hauled in by the second baseman. The left fielder, number five. Digging in now, Rosel Herrera. He was a ground out victim last time up. Yeah, Matty, expect this pitcher to try and get the same result as his last at bat right here. The double play is in order. Anything on the ground, the way this defense is, they could certainly roll two. One ball, one strike to count. He's set. Here comes the 1 1. There's strike two as it catches the outside corner. A look to the second baseman. And they got there so quickly, the runner didn't get very far from the bag. They settled with just the one now out. The third baseman. Brian Stepping up to the plate, Brian Anderson. Anderson. Career numbers versus Syndergaard. He's three for nine. Now a 58-foot curveball that misses for a ball. Line hard, but foul. Both clubs with three hits in the ball game. Slow roller down the third baseline. That's through, and he's now two for three in this one. Throw won't get him. Sometimes this game doesn't make sense right the there. He's it. out on his front Jorge. side. His butt's in the oh, dugout, and he's still able to roll it through for a knock. Pitcher has to be frustrated. Standing in now, Jorge Alfaro. As he'll take a look at a slider here that finds the zone for strike one. He's 0 for 2 in the ballgame so far. Hit out towards second. Echeverria to his left. He's there. And the two out threat will not come to pass as the inning is over. Marlins strand a pair. They're down 1 0. In now is Andrelton Simmons. Leading off for the back. Here comes the first pitch. Stop. Andrew third. First pitch fastball in there for a cold strike. You know, guys, sometimes guys don't like pulling the trigger. Oh, oh. They want to see something go by, calibrate the speed, calibrate the break, and then make their adjustments off that. Maybe that's the case right here. Throw on to first, and one shortstop grounds out to the other, one away. Now that the second baseman. Here's Echeverria now. A hit in two at bats for him at this point in the ballgame. First offering on its way. And very quickly there, they're two gone to start the inning. The catcher number three. At the plate, Tomas Nito. He was retired via the ground ball last time up. First pitch coming, here it is. And he popped him up. Back into foul territory behind first. And no one will track it down. Pitch taken several inches below the zone, in fact. Takes this the other way to right. And that is in there for a two-out base knock. 
So the bottom of the inning is still alive after the two out base hit. I appreciate the moxie right there but three fastballs at this level usually turns into a knock. And that'll bring in the speedy Keon Broxton. He started out the evening 0 for 2 so far. Here's the first pitch to him. First pitch hack in here and that's the first strike. That's what makes pitching so difficult. You get the first two guys out of the inning. Then you give up that two out base hit. Now you have the middle part of the order coming up and this is where you have to really. And he'll get there in plenty of time to put this one away and that ends the inning. Mets leave one but they hold a one nothing lead. Here's Neil Walker and guys seventh inning already. Hey I'm not tomorrow. complaining but this one's been baseman. flying by. Neil. Yeah I'll agree with that Matt. Walker. That's what you get when both starting pitchers have it working. Neither of them have been nibbling around the strike zone at all and they've trusted their defense to make the plays and they've done just that. Yeah and it's resulted in a game that could really go either way in these late innings. And that finds the target nothing in two now. Guys, I've been really impressed with him tonight. I mean, he's carving these guys up with all of his pitches. Grounded to first. Oh, and he can't pick it up cleanly. And a great job to stick with it here as he gets the first down of the inning. Well, you're going to bobble the ball. You Never have to hold it when a guy is lumbering down the base pass. He's no speedster, so that was a good job to stay calm and make the recovery throw. First pitch of the at bat. Took a little off and it's in for a called strike one. Not too often you see a changeup come across at 88 miles an hour on the gun. Still effective when you're throwing a fastball in the high 90s though. The wind up and the 0-2 pitch. And another foul ball. Breaking ball that time that misses out of the zone. Skied into straightaway right. And he will run this one down. A good read off the bat for the, the second bat. out. So another exceptional effort for him on the mound. He's got the shutout working here, as we'll show you the league ERA leaders. And with the year winding down, you can see he currently leads the NL in that department. Coming to the plate now, JT Riddle. No hits in two trips to the plate for him in the ballgame. Starts him out with a changeup for a strike. Late decision to swing that time, and as a result, it's 0-2. So far, this has been a terrific outing for this guy. Throwing well, keeping his pitches to a minimum, locating his fastball to both sides of the plate, good command of the off-speed pitches, very little traffic on the bases. So far, he couldn't have drawn up to be any better than he has been so far in this one. Look out as this bat shatters on impact. Throw in time, and the side is returned. One, two, three, go the Marlins. It remains one nothing. Into the box now, Michael Conforto. He'll be the man to lead things off here in the bottom of the seventh. First pitch coming, here it is. There's a swing and a drive hit well out to right field. O'Brien going back, still going back. See you later. Over the wall, a home run. A solo home run there for Michael Conforto. 38th home run of the season for him. As the Mets are out in front now, two to nothing. He hit a homer last night too so it's obvious that he's in a groove right now. My advice to this staff don't give him anything he can extend his arms on you do and he's going to make you pay for it just like he did. And here's the former first round draft choice Brandon Nimmo line drive to center field. Guerrero is right there one down. The third 
baseman. Digging in, Robinson Cano. One run in and one gone so far this inning. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Hit to third. Anderson fields it cleanly. Throw to first, and Cano is a ground out victim. Two gone. Not a lot you can do with that pitch. That fastball just ate him up inside and gets the soft grounder for the out. First pitch of the at bat. Hit hard down the right field line, but that's a foul ball. Line drive to left, and that's in for a base hit. Make it a one for three game so far. Bottom of the seventh inning will go at least one plate appearance deeper after the two out hit. So it's a runner at first with two men out. And up to bat next, the pitcher Noah Syndergaard. First offering on its way. Just able to get a piece of that for strike one. Changeup gets him out in front for strike two. Smith, the runner at first with two gone. Mets pitcher behind at the plate with a ball and two strikes. Anderson is over to take a look and this is going to wind up a foul ball. Now a fastball but that's easy to lay off and it's back to even at two and two. Line towards center field. Guerrero is there and he'll make the catch to retire the side. A run on two hits and they leave one. We'll look ahead to inning number eight now. It's the Mets two and the Marlins nothing. So coming to the plate, Gabby Guerrero. He got called out on strikes his last time through. Yeah, Maddie, and hopefully he got it out of his system. Especially now, he's got to bear down. He gets the two strikes in this spot, has to put the ball in play. Owen won the count. Drilled on the ground is short. Throw on to first in time, so the leadoff man is set down to open up inning number eight. Martin Cano will grab a bat and hit for the pitcher Miami. here. Number 14, Martin Prado. Here's a blooper out toward left center. And that'll take care of the pinch hitter here for route number two. The batter number 13. Second base. Here's Starlin Castro. Only four outs remaining for them to try and rally back in this one. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. No balls in one strike. No runs, four hits, and no errors in the game for the Marlins. Behind 0 and 2 now. And he's got himself another one as he picks up strikeout number nine here, and the side is retired. Miami down in order. They trail it here two to nothing. Tehran Guerrero please. is on to pitch now out of the bullpen in Miami. the bottom half of the eighth. Number 56. Stepping into the box, Andrelton Simmons. He's hitless in three at bats to this point. Leading up for the Mets. First stop. pitch of the at bat. Andrelton. And that misses ball one. One and one to the Mets leadoff hitter. One and one. And this is yanked hard down the left field line. 
And that finds the outfield grass for a base hit. Throw into second. But he'll be in there with a double. He went with the slider, but the hitter wasn't fooled for a second. Gets the barrel of that through the zone defense. and rips it down the okay. line for a leadoff double. Riding into the box, a Danny Echevarria. He's working on a one for three thus far. First pitch of the at bat on its way. And this one's in the dirt. And no advance, it's ball one. Marlins have some action in the bullpen now as a right hander is up and throwing. Line to the right side. And that's in there. Base hit. And they'll put the brakes on at third. Runners at the corners with nobody out. Hey, this Number has the three. makings of being a pretty Come big on. hitting D row. Lead off double. Now Bingo. a base hit. And all of a sudden we're looking at first and third. Yeah, sometimes you wake up, you just get smacked in the mouth right here. He's gonna have to start executing pitches. He cannot leave a ball over the heart of the plate right here. He's gonna have damage on his hands. Into the box, Tomas Nido, as he lays off a fastball too low for ball one. He's got a hit in three at bats to this point. This is on the ground over to first. The second for one. Onto the pitcher covering in time. It's a double play. That's good athleticism here by the pitcher getting off the mound. He gets the ball to first and then hustles his way over to the bag to help him wrap up the tough 3-6-1 double play. In now, Keon Broxton. And he puts it on the ground to second. And that is in the center field as he comes through. It's a base hit. And the runner scores from third as they extend their lead. Hey, Dero, that's a big RBI right, right there goal. to stretch this lead to three. Good. Takes a lot of pressure off your pitcher going into the bottom part of the inning. Yeah, Dan, no doubt. As an offense, all you're trying to do is put your pitchers in positions to be successful. Giving them that three-run cushion has to make you feel good. Stepping in now, Michael Conforto fouled away. He's two for three and looking for more here. Now a move over to first and a dive, but he's back in. Comes set Neil, and the 0 1. Boston makes a break for it. Hold high in the air out to right field. O'Brien will get there and he puts it away to retire the side. So one run on three hits, no errors, and one man left on. We played eight full. It's the Mets three and the Marlins nothing. Now at the plate, Rosell Herrera. He'll start things out against Noah Syndergaard as this inning is underway. Rosell Herrera. First pitch on its way. Ninth inning underway now as the first pitch is taken for a cold strike. Not a bad idea right there. Make this guy work and see if he can throw the ball over the plate. Throws the first pitch for a strike. They need to get some runners on base and not a bad plan. Unfortunately, the pitcher came in with a strike on the first pitch. Inside as that perhaps will back him off a bit. One and two. Still one and two. A 
Another 1-2 delivery. Pitch is popped up, and there's out number one. The batter. The third base. So stepping in, Brian Anderson. So far, two for three in this one. First delivery to him on the way. Now a check swing, but he holds up in time. Ball one. Bases are empty, one man out. And a strike to even the count. One and one. Watching him on the mound, I'm really impressed with what he's doing right now. He's been really aggressive and confident over the last couple of innings. Count is one and two now. Down the third baseline. But this is a foul ball as the count holds steady at one and two. Here he comes again, one, two. Now a ball lined to the left side. But this will be a foul ball. Got him swinging. Chased it well out of the zone, and there are two gone. Man, this guy's on his game today. Not only now when he's throwing it. strikes, Texas. but how about Four the eight. amount of strikeouts? And what's even more impressive, no walks up to this point. So he's pounding that zone with strikes, and he's making these hitters swing the bat. So here's the cleanup hitter for Miami, Jorge Alfaro. He's their last shot here with two away in the ninth as they look to avoid the shutout. Yeah, Matt, they just haven't had any answer for the great pitching so far in this one. Here's a first pitch slider that just tails out of the zone. It's ball one. This offense is going to have to find a way to get going. It's happened in the past. Every team goes through it where everyone seems to fall into a funk at the same time. Everyone needs to relax and not try and be the hero and just start getting a leadoff guy on. And that's in there. So perhaps some life here with two men out. So the two out base hit and the top of the inning is still alive. Now batting. So it's a runner at first with two men out, and that will bring in the Pittsburgh area native, the left-handed bat of Neil Walker. Line towards center field, and that's in there. Base hit. Hey, this might be their best opportunity to at least get on the board. They've been struggling offensively, and they find themselves with two runners on board. Let's see if they can continue it. And that'll bring up Peter O'Brien. And his guys are looking to erase that donut on the scoreboard with a runner in scoring position. Yeah, Matt, they've been really shut down so far in this one. They've had runners on base, but haven't been able to string anything together. Just a tick behind for a strike. Same pitch that time, the sinker, but it looked like he made a good adjustment with it. Yeah, Matt, that's a great point. Released it from out front much better that time. I just think he wasn't real happy. Throwing the first is going to be in time to get him, and the Mets have claimed the fourth consecutive victory here as this ball game is over. Thank you.